Today we're going to look at two really nice series that will serve as really good practice for working with the convergence tests. So first of all, we've got the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over the log of n to the power log of n. And then we're going to really compare that and contrast that with 1 over the log of n to the power log log n. And I'll say that one of these will converge while the other will diverge, as we'll see. Okay, so let's start with this first one. So I'm just going to copy it over. So we've got this sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over the log of n to the power log of n. Observe that I really need to start at 2 because the log of 1 is always 0. And notice that this converges by the integral test if and only if a certain integral converges. And that integral will be the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over the log of x to the power log of x dx. So let's determine if that converges. And we're going to do that starting with a substitution. So let's maybe go ahead and set u equal to the log of x. I kind of think that's the obvious substitution. Notice that that means that x is equal to e to the u, which means that dx will give us e to the u du. And then let's also observe that when x is equal to 2, that means that u is equal to the log of 2. Whereas when x goes to positive infinity, u also tends towards positive infinity. So that's how the bounds of integration will change. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we're going to have the integral, like I said, from the log of 2 up to infinity of, now we have e to the u over, well, now this is going to be u to the u du. And now, well, I'm going to essentially reverse the integral test for series and instead test if this integral converges by determining if a corresponding series converges. So let's notice that this converges if and only if which series? Well, I'm going to write this as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of um, e to the n over n to the n converges. Okay, so how can we do a series test for this? Well, I think our best bet is to use the ratio test. So let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of we have e to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. And all of this is over e to the n over n to the n. So observe that when all is said and done, we'll have a single copy of e in the numerator. I can bring that out. So we'll have e, and then we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of what? Well, that's going to turn into n to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. So we'll start with a 1 over n plus 1. That means we've got an n plus 1 to the power of n left over. But then I've got an n in the numerator of the fraction where that is in the denominator. So I can write this as n over n plus 1 raised to the n. But then a little fairly simple homework exercise will show that this term is tending off towards e to the minus 1. In other words, to negative... In other words, to 1 over e, whereas this 1 over n plus 1 is clearly tending off towards 0, meaning that our limit here is equal to 0. But if that limit is 0, then by the convergence test, this series converges. But then by the integral test, this integral converges. But then by the integral test again, our original series converges. So, so far, what we've shown is that this first series converges. I guess I could say absolutely converges, but it's a series of positive terms, so that doesn't really matter. And since I said that one converged and one diverged, that means this other series diverges. But let's see how we can show that. Okay, so looking back at this series, which 
looks pretty similar, except we've got a log inside of a log over here, like a composition. And so, well, by the integral test, we know that this series right here with the doubly composed logs will converge if and only if the corresponding integral with this doubly composed logs also converge. Now, we're going to start pretty similarly to what we did before, which is to do a substitution. And in fact, we're going to do the same substitution. So we'll take u equal to the natural log of x again. And in this case, I won't run through all of the details without the bounds change and everything else because we've already looked at that. And so that's going to give us this integral from the natural log of 2 up to infinity. And then we'll have e to the u over what? Well, it's going to be u to the power natural log of u du. But now I'm going to take this denominator and rewrite it a little bit. So I've still got this integral natural log of 2 to infinity e to the u over e to the power natural log of u. So that takes care of this u in the base. And then that's all raised to the power natural log of u. But then by exponent rules, that's going to be e to the natural log of u squared du. Okay, great. But then let's observe that this is equal to the integral from 2 to infinity of e to the u minus the natural log of u squared du. But now we're going to make a little observation. And that is for all values of u bigger than or equal to the natural log of 2, we have the following. We have u is strictly bigger than the natural log of u squared. So that's pretty easy to check. You could perhaps check it equivalently by showing that u minus the natural log of u squared is always positive when u is, I think you only really have to be bigger than or equal to one there. And you could perhaps do that just by showing it's an increasing function and well, it's positive at a certain point, but that's kind of neither here nor there because the point here is that as long as u is bigger than or equal to natural log of two, we have e to the u minus the natural log of u squared is in fact bigger than one. But that means our original integral is bigger than the integral from the natural log of two to infinity of simply du. But of course that's gonna diverge because that's the area, if you will, of an infinitely long rectangle with a height of one. So anyway, we get infinity right here. But if we get infinity right here, our original integral way back here diverged which means our original sum over here also diverges. So that means we finish this thing off. Our first sum converges while our second sum diverges.